Welcome to your weekly UAS news update. We have three stories for you this week. First up, Insta360 is jumping into the drone game. That's kind of interesting. We have the Neo2 that has been spotted on the FCC filings. And then finally, the CEO of DroneUp seems to want to push for digital airspace authorizations. Let's get to it. And first up, it looks like DJI might have some serious competition with Insta360, the company that has been known for its 360 degree cameras. They have launched a new drone brand that is called Anti-Gravity. And their first drone sounds pretty cool. It's reportedly the world's first 360 degree drone that weighs less than 249 grams and can shoot in 8K uh, quality. Anti-Gravity says that its focus is not necessarily on just raw specs, but instead on creating an immersive flight experience Experience that makes storytelling easy for everyone from beginner to experts. Now, the drone will reportedly include smart safety features like payload detection to deter misuse and modifications. Now, this is an interesting statement. I don't know exactly what it means, but uh, we'll have to find out. Now, the full official unveiling is scheduled to be in August of this year. So uh, we've seen other companies like GoPro and Skydio struggle to challenge DJI's dominance. So it's going to be interesting to see if Insta360 and anti-gravity's approach is going to well, lead them anywhere. And of course, in coincidental news, DJI appears to also be on the edge of releasing their own 360 degree camera in this case. So uh, everybody's stepping on everybody's territory, it looks like. Next up, speaking of DJI, it looks like the second version of the Neo, the Neo 2, has surfaced on the FCC website, which is usually the first major step before a product can be sold in the US. Now, the filing reveals a notable upgrade, a 1606 milliamp hour battery, which is about 12% of an increase from the original Neo. Now, this should translate into longer flight time, assuming that the drone is still uh, waiting about the same. And the original flight time was about 18 minutes. While the FCC approval is a promising sign, it does not guarantee that the Neo 2 is going to be available in the US. Uh, since last October, the US Customs has been detaining some DJI shipments, citing the Uyghur Forced Labor Prevention Act. Now, DJI firmly disputes any connection to forced labor, but the issue has already prevented the release of other products in the United States, like the Mavic 4 Pro, and then we also expect the Mini 5 to also be delayed. So even if the FCC is a green light, the Neo's 2 feature in the United States and the market uh, remains it's pretty uncertain at this point. And finally, Tom Walker, the CEO of DroneUp, published an opinion piece uh, for Fox News where he pointed to a recent dangerous incident uh, during the Texas flood. We reported on that event. He also testified recently alongside a UVSI at an hearing, uh, pushing the same narrative. Now, the narrative is that a private drone reportedly collided with a rescue helicopter, forcing the crew to land and grounding a vital asset during a life or death situation. And unfortunately, there's been chatter that the aircraft was not actually a private drone after all, but a drone used by a government agency. So something that obviously Walker conveniently did not mention. Now, Walker says also that this is not an isolated problem. He cited FAA data showing that illegal drones incursions near U.S. airports jumped by 25% in the first quarter of this year compared to 2024. He also warns that our current system for detecting and responding to those threats are, in his word, fractured, outdated, and dangerously inadequate. I actually wonder how the current provider of uh, detecting systems would feel about this statement, but that's besides the point. So what's his solution? Well, Walker wants a unified real tracking system for all, all, all low altitude uh, air traffic. He's also pushing for secure digital credential to link drones to their pilots and for expanding the authority of local law enforcement to counter drone threats, something that I'm not necessarily against uh, at this point. He argues that the technology to do this is already in existence, but says that we need to act now before one of these accidents becomes a national tragedy. And of course, as you may guess, this technology is likely exist in the form of a product that Walker would sell to the public, right? Surprise, surprise. Now, keep in mind that DroneUp acquired uh, the then Lancer Proof provider AirMap. Now, if you are pretty new to uh, this space, the app became very controversial several years ago when they tried to push for, wait for it, paid access to the airspace, and they became a pariah in the industry. Back then, DroneUp silently terminated the app, but could we see a rebirth from the ashes? Well, time will tell. 
DroneUp recently struggled to fulfill its promises with Walmart to provide drone delivery services, and Walmart had to hire two other providers instead. So repositioning the company to try to charge for airspace access would not really be that big of a surprise. Now, I can tell you that we at Pilot Institute will continue to oppose any sort of technology that introduces any cost to access the national airspace system for routine operations by small service providers or recreational users. Access to the national National airspace system must remain free for any and all users, something that we fought against during the air map days, and of course, something that we will continue to fight with the drone up days. And we'll be watching this closely and we'll keep you updated if there are any changes. And yes, we came back from Oshkosh. We spent uh, about 10 days over there uh, in Wisconsin. We had a great time meeting a ton of our students, uh, talking about the product and uh, just overall making great connection with flight schools and a lot of fly instructors. So we are very grateful to hear all of your experiences with the product. Tell us how you actually use the product, uh, which sometimes is in ways that we did not imagine. So this is really cool. And then this week on Post Flight, our show where we state our opinion in the premium community, we're also going to be talking about the Sky Rover X1 and then also how drones are being used to drop mosquitoes in Hawaii. And yeah, that's right, I said drop mosquitoes, not destroy mosquitoes. It's a long story. So we'll see you on Monday for the live and for Post Flight in the community. And in the meantime, fly safe. We'll see you then. Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Post Flight. We took a week off, we're back, we're fresh. Some of us are fresh, some of us are tired. No. So I'm not pointing any fingers. Some of us didn't take a week off, you know, f off and stay off the airspace. The airspace needs to be free to access. We've been saying this for years, that the, the digital authorization isn't going to do jack. Mm -hmm.